Good day. My name is Kathy Erig, and I'm going to show you how invisible gold occurs in pyrite from the Olympic Dam deposit. Even though I'm presenting, my co-authors are listed here, and I'd like to acknowledge that they've done most of the work that I'm presenting here today. Olympic Dam, its major source of revenue, or its only source of revenue, is from the sale of copper, uranium, gold, and silver. It is one of the world's largest gold deposits. The right-hand bar chart shows the top 10 gold deposits as it was in 2016, and showing the Olympic Dam sits at number three. This can vary a little bit, but the overall trend is about the same. Olympic Dam commenced production in 1988. Its gold head grade varies from 0.4 to 1 ppm. It's produced about 2.4 million ounces of gold since 1988. About 80% of the gold is recovered to copper concentrates, which is typical for IOCG type deposits. And the percent of recovery is actually a function of the mineralogy. The Olympic Dam iron oxide copper, gold, uranium, silver deposit is actually a tectano magnetic hydrothermal breccia hosted IOCG deposit. There's an unequivocal spatial correlation between iron, copper, uranium, gold, and silver across the deposit. Olympic Dam, like all other deposits, also has systematic um, mineralogical zonation. And the main one for Olympic Dam is really the conversion of, of reduced iron facies to more oxidized iron facies going from the deeper and more peripheral parts of the deposit to the shallower, more central parts. There's also a zonation of siderite, fluorite to barite, all along with pyrite, going to chalcopyrite, going to bornite, going to chalcosite, and it's all hypogene. The, and um, uranium, coffinite, branerite are the major uranium minerals, and there's multiple styles of gold mineralization. The distribution of gold at a deposit is fairly, is fairly systematic also. These are block model slices at about 350 meters beneath the surface, showing copper, and gold at two different levels. We've changed from a, a true mine grid north to a mine planning north in these, where six kilometers is the length that we see from up and down on here. Copper above about 1% is shown in yellow. And when we look at the gold, we can see that gold greater than about 0.4 ppm pretty much well aligns with that copper greater than 0.5 with a little bit of changes in the distribution. If we go down, about 75 meters, this last block model slice of gold. It also shows that we still are, have a relatively high grade gold area here and a little bit more down here. But in this area here, oh sorry, we overlay the structure onto it and we can see that in some cases there is an association between high gold and some structures. But that uh, diamond indicates a spot where we actually hit a Bonanza gold vein in September 1994, which is the only time that we've hit, hit one in the past. Gold mineralogy at Olympic Dam can be divided into visible and what we call invisible. And that visible really is defined at greater than 0.5 microns. The gold bearing minerals are, are gold, um, electrum, which has uh, silver, copper, and iron. There's gold copper alloys. There's a whole variety of, of gold and gold silver tellurides, calivite, pestivite, uh, petsite, selvanite, costivite. But more importantly, there's a close spatial association between uh, bismuth, bismuth tellurides, and lead tellurides, especially in the presence of barite. These optical photomicrographs over here just show gold with tetrahedrite and gold in pyrite. Uh, the SEM BSC images below just show gold, um, gold with gold copper alloys, gold copper alloy with a, a telluride and some bismuth, and gold along with bismuth telluride and barite. Invisible gold, and here invisible gold is defined as gold either present within the mineral lattice or as discrete nanoparticles making it undetectable by conventional optical and scanning electron microscopy. Here I'm going to show you an example of invisible gold and pyrite from one sample that it occurs at about 1800 meters depth. The two profiles actually show copper uranium and uh, sorry, copper gold and tellurium bismuth 
downhole concentration profiles. And at about 1800, we can see that there is a little tiny bit of spike in, of gold along with a spike in copper. Not too much difference on bismuth, but there's a little bit of elevated tellurium. We discovered very high grade, very high gold values, invisible gold values in pyrite via laser ablation analysis. This was unusual at Olympic Dam because typically calcocite and boronite contain submicroscopic gold. This optical microscope image shows pyrite that looks fairly homogeneous that's being replaced by calcopyrite. However, we can see there's a lot of complexity in that pyrite by looking at the high contrast BSC image where we, the calcopyrite is actually, is that bright white, but we can see the various uh, smaller, sub, smaller domains within that pyrite and these suggest that the pyrite's been recrystallized. From that laser ablation data, you can do all kinds of multivariate analysis and, and this is just multivariate analysis from that one sample. Over here, we, we can see the um, box and whisker plot showing the concentration ranges for the trace elements that were analyzed. When we do hierarchical cluster analysis, the dendrogram shows the clear association with gold, tin, copper, bismuth, uh, lead, antimony, arsenic, and silver, and that gold's not really associated with manganese, nickel, zinc, cobalt, selenium, tellurium inside that pyrite. K-means clustering. We'll further break down that data to show that, again, the set, telling you the same thing, that you have a, a gold arsenic poor pyrite, and then you also have gold arsenic plus minus 10 um, rich pyrites. However, that laser ablation analysis doesn't actually tell you how gold actually occurs within or how the invisible gold occurs within pyrite. By using high resolution scanning transmission, scanning and transmission electron microscopy, we can see primary zonation, coherent intergrowth zones, defects, and nanoparticle growth. The upper row on the right hand side, this shows arsenic, nickel, and, and cobalt primary oscillatory zoning, which is typical not only for Olympic dam pyrites, but other pyrites around the world. And note the scale bar there is 500 nanometers. When we go down and, or sorry, when we look further, we can also see a lot of superimposed trails of nanoparticles and nanoporosity. And these nanoparticles actually, can, nanoparticle trails consist of bismuth, um, lead, tellurium, and silver. We can also look at over here, we can look at the, um, the, the mineralogy, even down at the five nanometer scale, and we can see that there's multiple phases that occur within in gold bearing particles. But even further, we can use the TEM mode and see that there's coherent intergrowth of tellurides with each other and, and with the host pyrite, where here we have an example of selvite uh, intergrown with pet site. We can also see multiple types of, def of defects that occur within the pyrite. And this is an example where we have a twin plane defect where these defects, are defects we interpret them as fluid pathways. So in summary, laser ablation analysis indicate the presence of invisible gold in pyrite from complex pyrite bearing ores at Olympic Dam. The laser ablation analysis, however, cannot adequately resolve either the fine scale nature of the trace element distributions or the physical state of gold. Nanoscale investigations reveal the presence of numerous bismuth lead telluride nanoparticles in pyrite, along with electrum, petsite, and selvanite. The association between gold minerals and bismuth lead tellurides depicted at the nanoscale reinforces the strong affinity between gold and calcophile elements as shown for arsenic-free pyrites elsewhere in the world. Interaction between bismuth, lead, uh, silver, copper-bearing fluids introduced during pyrite replacement by calcopyrite with gold presumably re released from um, pyrite resulted in the precipitation of gold calcogen nanoparticles. Fluid-assisted reworking of pyrite during brecciation is consistent with the complex evolution of ores at Olympic Dam and likely other gold deposits elsewhere. 
the presence of discrete nano, uh, sorry, the discrete gold phases and gold bearing nanoparticles at Olympic Dam Pyrite that plots below the sol solubility limit proposed by Reich et al. Uh, likely needs recalibration in light of the results presented here. And the importance of, of looking at all these different gold, uh, gold minerals and their occurrences is because it actually does have recovery impacts. And what this has actually shown, our studies have shown that you probably need more than one process to recover uh, gold, particularly at the Olympic Dam. Thank you. <laughs>